with the Mean Machine victorious in the main event of LFA 80. That was a firefight, sir. Yeah, I, I don't really expect anything less, I'll tell you that, so I hope everybody enjoyed that. Man, it was definitely enjoyable, looked crazy. Two knockdowns in the first round, and then that crazy spinning back kick that it looked like it sent both of you, like it hit him off the cage back into you, you hit him so hard. I have no idea, but he, he, he tripped me underneath, so I had to recoup and uh, re-get everything structured so I can get back to what I was doing. Let's talk about the first round, those two knockdowns. Uh, the, the first time I threw it, I didn't think I, I put a whole lot on it. I just wanted to make it quick and snappy, and it, I think it hurt him pretty good. So after that, I knew that he didn't want to get hit with too many of those. So uh, I tried to put a little bit more pressure on him. I should have been a little bit more, uh, uh, not hesitant, but I should have just kind of backed off just a hair just to kind of give myself some room to breathe and let more shots go that are more uh, more accurate. And it looked like Chepe went for those low calf kicks. How did you deal with those? Hey man, it's a fight, man. Not everything's pretty in there, so you just take whatever uh, they're given, but you got to make sure you give it twice as much back. So that's all I was trying to do. Also, you guys both took each other on the chin. How do you feel taking those shots now that you're a full, full blown featherweight? I don't know. He he cracked pretty good, so uh, I'm glad I was able to take those shots. And we trained a bunch of featherweights at my gym, so I mean, I think I can I can handle some of the best shots because I train with the best guys in the world. What was the message in the corner going into that second round? Uh, just to stop with the spin and stuff and uh, pretty much stay long, get him against the cage and pick my shots. How did you feel that you were able to wear him down there in the second round? Um, actually, he, he was actually trying to put pressure on me because I knew he didn't want too many shots that were going to be uh, you know, coming his way. So I knew he was putting pressure, kind of trying to go for a jewel shot. He got me with one, but I was working my way back up. I was I was practice way, like I practiced way too many times for for that to really just come into effect where he could actually effectively use it. So um, you know that's pretty much all I could do. We saw a nice little sweep. You got a guy with a wrestling background there on his back in the second round. How that feel getting a guy that caliber? You know, to be honest, that. I don't remember that. So I got to go back and watch it. It was it was really fast in there, and you know I was just rolling with the punches that, that, by that time. Well, obviously they're talking about it out there, somewhat controversial on the finish. How'd you feel about it? It doesn't matter. I was going to keep doing the same thing to him the whole entire round and the next round after that. So, uh, I honestly, I cut him. I cut him like right down the side of his his, his head. So I don't necessarily think it was a, it was a, it was in the back of the head type of shot. But if he wanted more, I could give him more. What's next? You know, I want I want a UFC contract. You know, that's what I want. I want a UFC contract. I want I want uh, Billy Cortillo. That was supposed to be matched up, I think, two months ago. Let's get that one uh, back on our schedule or something. That's what I want. Me machine. Thank you for the time, sir. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it.